And greetings weather prognosticator Chad Merrill here and here we are we've made it through Memorial Day and the unofficial start to summer is upon us. We are going to look at not only the weather forecast but also an update to the crops specifically the corn crop and a tutorial on rainbows thanks to one of our followers submitting some material to us just this morning here on May 26th. Here's a visible satellite image we have high pressure across the mid-Atlantic producing the dry weather and dew points still relatively low, but notice there is a lot of cloud cover to the south and to the west. We'll talk about when to expect a change in the weather. But first of all, have you ever heard of something called a fog bow? It actually does exist. This footage is compliments of Daniel Myers, who captured some fog in the Adams County area. And notice as we do look at this video, Look at the, a bit of a coloration here near the trees. Again, this is very early in the morning. There was fog while the sun was coming up. And what happens is when the sun is very low in the sky, it refracts off these raindrops and creates a different color. So that's exactly what we are seeing here in Adams County this morning. A little bit difficult to see with the camera, but Daniel definitely noticed the different colors associated with the sun refracting off the raindrops. We want to thank him for this footage and talk a little bit about exactly how this happens. First of all, early in the morning, the sun hits the raindrops, in this case the fog, and what happens is, as you see in this next graphic, is the sun actually, because it's at such a low angle, it basically bends as it slows down because the air is a bit denser on the water droplets and separates into those colors. This can happen in a very unique situation. Now this is footage from Scotland where you see a very nice fog bow in this particular instance. So they can be very vibrant at times, but basically it only happens during the early morning or the late evening. And of course it also happens in showers and thunderstorms at the very end of a shower or thunderstorm what typically happens is has to happen in the early evening or the early part of the morning hours because that's when the sun is lowest in the sky you won't see a rainbow during the middle of the day because the sun angle is too high in the sky so just keep out for those uh, fog bows that may develop during some foggy mornings and we will have plenty of them this summer well, I also want to talk about the first hot spell because it's been quite a long time since we've had to deal with heat. The last time a heat advisory was issued for the Mid-Atlantic was in late July. So it's been quite a while and usually the first heat wave is the most challenging and we are going to see bits and pieces of that over the next couple of days but it won't officially be a heat wave. In order to qualify you have to have three days where temperatures are at or above 90 degrees and they have to be consecutive. Now severe weather frequency in the mid-Atlantic typically you get your strongest storms between about 4 and 7 o'clock in the evening. That's typically when you have large hail, gusty winds, and tornadoes associated with severe weather. So just a little bit of climatology for you on summer severe weather frequency. Now we've got to give hats to uh, Hat, tip of the hat to weather prognosticator Bill O'Toole because he nailed the forecast here for late May. As you can see, it was calling for periodic showers and thunderstorms between the 22nd and the 29th. And I'll talk about when we can expect that weather and then a fair and mild trend to end the month of May. So first of all, drum roll, <laughs> let's talk about the changeable weather week. A ridge of high pressure is in place. Notice the lines bulging to the north here across much of the uh, eastern U.S. What that upper ridge is going to do is allow the heat and the humidity to build each day this week, Wednesday through Friday. Notice we have what's called a cutoff low pressure. It's a low pressure in the nation's midsection that's detached from the main jet stream flow, which is to the north. So this is going to lumber slowly towards the east and pick up some moisture from Florida and we are going to see some showers and a couple of thunderstorms to end the week. But we also have a changeable pattern for cooler and less humid weather. You can start to see signs of that with the jet stream increasing in speed here across the northwest. That is a sign of a Canadian air mass 
that is headed across the country. Now, if you're concerned about the crops, how have they been doing? Well, this is information from the United States Department of Agriculture, and here we are in 2020, and the uh, corn progress a little delayed. That's because of the cooler weather. So we a little bit late start to the corn crop here in uh, year 2020. As you look back through previous years, we've had instances in early May where the uh, progress was noted very well. But the only delay, the only reason for the delay is because of the cooler temperatures. Now as we look at a secondary graphic here, this is the corn emerged progress, the progress that it has made um, so far this month. And of course, it's just getting started. And as you can see, there are previous years where the corn crop got off to a good start earlier in the month of May and sometimes even in late April. And usually by this time, we're about maybe 40% of the way there to uh, the, the corn crop emerging and appearing fairly uh, mature. So just a chilly end to the spring season is the reason why the corn crop is off to a slow start. But as you can see, traditionally, the corn crop is progresses to 100% by the end of July. That's why August and early September are the prime months to get the best corn. What does corn need to grow? It needs lots of rain. The soil moisture anomaly across the Mid-Atlantic is fine. It's at 0%, which means no surplus of moisture, but no deficit as well. But in the western part of the Mid-Atlantic, uh, along and west of the Appalachian Spine, definitely has been plenty of rain with a surplus of 50 to 60%. Now let's talk about when rain is going to fall and how much. We should see between now and the end of the month a half an inch to an inch of rain across most of the Mid-Atlantic, further south along and east of I-95 about an inch to an inch and a quarter of rain. Here is the weather rundown through June 1st, warm and humid weather through Saturday, a noticeable change though as we go into the weekend with a cold front that will bring us some relief. But ahead of that, showers and a couple of thunderstorms which we definitely could use and that will bring us the half an inch to an inch of rain. This is the same storm system that is moving through northern Florida. Right now it will move up the east coast. So we should get a good dosing of rain, followed by cooler and less humid weather this coming Sunday, all the way through Tuesday, June 2nd. And with the North Atlantic Oscillation trending in a negative phase early in June and a high pressure building from Canada, there will be frost confined to Spruce Knob, West Virginia. It's about 5,000 feet, one of the highest elevations in West Virginia. Snowshoe, West Virginia, Kaiser's Ridge, Maryland, Laurel Summit, Pennsylvania, and north of I-80 in northern Pennsylvania. It will be that chilly. We also have a nice viewing forecast for the planet Mercury in the western sky, and that will be Monday, June 1st, and Thursday, June 4th. Both nights will offer clear skies, Optimal viewing is shortly after sunset, so between 9 and 9.30 p.m. So just keep that in mind if you like to escape the city lights and see the planets, and also if you like to see some of those galaxies. What else can we expect in June? Well, we are looking for development of a tropical system in the Caribbean or Gulf of Mexico sometime between the 5th and 10th of June. And traditionally, when we have tropical activity develop in this area, which is a prime spot in June, we typically see that moisture get transported north. So the Mid-Atlantic will likely benefit from some of the rain in the middle part of June. Likely, though, no impacts with respect to wind damage. This will mainly be a rain event for the Mid-Atlantic, but I don't expect any heavy flooding, but it will help replenish some of the dry soils that uh, could develop uh, here early in the month, but we are not expecting any drought, that is for sure. But this tropical system will help with the moisture. All right, that does it for this podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. And log on to almanac.com to order your 2020 almanac or the almanac in digital format. Have a great day.